Seven visitors are inbound. Not one headline-grabbing comet, not two coincidental sky streakers. Seven significant objects crowding into the inner solar system inside a single six-month window. Statistically, that shouldn't happen. Yet, by late 2025, the discovery logs tell a different story. Pan stars and atlas triggers light up like a pinball machine. The minor planet center cues fill, and telescope time suddenly feels like a scarce commodity again. At the center of the swarm, the strangest of the lot, 3i slash ATLAS, only the third confirmed interstellar visitor in human history, wearing an emerald coma and chemistry that refuses to behave. Coincidence or a hint that the rules of our sky just bent. To understand why astronomers are buzzing, you have to see how the sausage gets made. Modern comet hunting is a machine. Hawaii, Chile, South Africa. Robotic telescopes sweeping the same fields every few nights. Stacking exposures, subtracting yesterday's sky from tonight's sky, and letting software catch anything that moved a few pixels. Magnitude 21 flex that would have been invisible on glass plates now pop out like neon. The cadence is relentless, the pipelines ruthless. And even with all that horsepower, bright, crowd-pleasing comets are still rare guests. In a normal half year, the Monte Carlo models say you expect two, maybe three with decent odds of backyard visibility. Seven lineups? That lives out in the long tail of probability, sub-percent territory. Which is why late 2025 looks less like business as usual and more like a celestial traffic jam. Discovery memos escalate from routine to breathless. Engineers who usually let the algorithms hum in the background are glued to live feeds, triaging which candidate gets follow-up first. The global net, pan stars, atlas, ZTF, amateur stacks from rooftops and ranches, begins to stitch a timeline that looks almost scripted. July's faint whisper from a distant passerby, September's first truly showy plume, October's doubleheader of sun-skimming fireworks, November's photogenic dusk visitor, December's quiet encore. If you're thinking that sounds too neat, you're not alone. Modelers ran their survey bias corrections three times before admitting the clustering is real. Into that pileup drops three I slash A-T-L-A-S, the wild card, where a normal long period comet announces itself with water vapor and dust. This thing lights up with CO2 dominance and a sprawling green coma, hundreds of thousands of kilometers wide. It began glowing far beyond the usual switch on distance, then kept brightening at a rate simple geometry couldn't explain. Spectroscopists, trained to see needles in haystacks, flagged metal lines that looked wrong. Not the comfortable iron nickel blend forged together in stars and planetesimal cores, but nickel pulling ahead iron suspiciously quiet, maybe exotic ices, maybe a thermal trick, maybe something we haven't seen before. Drop your theory in the comments, what's your best natural explanation? The swarm isn't just a numbers story, it's geometry. Several of the seven arrive with steep orbital tilts and perihelia compressed into weeks, not months. That matters for two reasons. First, it creates overlapping visibility windows. More dawn and dusk shows you can actually see without a 20-inch scope. Second, it runs the visitors through the heliospheric shooting gallery together. Solar maximum is peaking, CMEs flying. When the sun coughs, ion tails snap like blue ribbons. In 2007, Stereo watched a comet's tail slice off in real time. With this many targets on the ecliptic highway, odds of catching live tail decapitations jump. Translation. Expect jaw-dropping time lapses as space weather writes its signature across multiple comets in the same week. None of this equals danger. Orbital solutions are precise and public. None of the seven intersects Earth's path. The closest crowd pleaser, SWAN, does a respectful flyby tens of millions of kilometers away. Spectacular for eyeballs, irrelevant for impact risk. But scientifically, the stakes are huge. Each visitor samples a different freezer in the cosmic pantry. Outer belt leftovers, Oort cloud deep freeze, and in 3i slash ATLAS's case, ingredients from an entirely different star's kitchen. That's why the spectrographs won't sleep. If a grain of 3i slash ATLAS dust ultimately crosses Earth's orbit in 2026 and burns as a meteor, 
it could be the first truly interstellar speck analyzed in our atmosphere. An isotope fingerprint from elsewhere, falling like a snowflake. There's a human story too. Space agencies are already juggling instruments like air traffic controllers. Coronagraphs must choose between solar storms and comet tails. Webb, Hubble, and ground giants trade midnight emails negotiating who stares when and at what. Amateur networks, discords, mailing lists, backyard radio arrays become the glue between gaps, catching the five-minute surge no one scheduled. In a season this compressed, a suburban DSLR stack can tip a model the pros are arguing over. If you've ever wanted to contribute to real science, this is the moment. One clear night, one good frame, one well-timed report, seven visitors in six months, a sub-percent roll of the cosmic dice, or a hint that our sampling of the solar system's cold storage has finally hit a vein. Whatever the cause, the outcome is the same. The next half year turns the sky into a living laboratory. Tails will snap and regrow. Comi will bloom and fade. Spectra will defy old categories. And an interstellar messenger will thread the needle between spectacle and mystery. Keep the basics in mind. Perihelion, astronomical unit, magnitudes. And you'll decode the headlines as fast as they drop. The rest is simple. Step outside, look up, and let the improbable unfold. For most sky watchers, comets are a curiosity that shows up once in a decade. A faint smudge, maybe a photogenic streak if you're lucky. But the late 2025 lineup is different. This is not one comet or even two headline grabbers. It is a caravan, a sequence of icy wanderers threading through the inner solar system, almost shoulder to shoulder. And in that caravan, two names leap out, Swan and Atlas K-1. Together with the interstellar outlier, 3i slash A-T-L-A-S, they are shaping up to deliver a spectacle that professional astronomers and backyard stargazers alike will remember for a lifetime. Start with SWAN, officially cataloged as C slash 2025 R2. Its path brings it within just 0.25 astronomical units of Earth, roughly 37 million kilometers, on October 21st. That's closer than any bright comet in years, and well inside the distance where the solar wind can sculpt a dramatic tail. Predictions put its brightness at magnitude two or three, which is bright enough to rival the stars of the Big Dipper. Under dark skies, you won't need a telescope. Just walk outside at dawn, look east, and you could catch a greenish sword of light cutting across the sky. If space weather delivers a coronal mass ejection at the same time, we might see Swan's ion tail snap and regrow in real time, an event that has happened only a handful of times in recorded history. Next comes Atlas K-1, diving closer to the sun than even Mercury. Its perihelion on October 8th will be at a blistering 0.33 astronomical units. At that distance, sunlight hits like a blowtorch vaporizing ices and blasting jets of gas into space. For comet watchers, that's a recipe for unpredictability. Atlas K-1 could flare suddenly, brighten by whole magnitudes overnight, or fragment under the strain. Or it could hold together and throw a tail that stretches across half the sky. Either way, it will be one of the most closely monitored comets of the year. Its fireworks captured by solar observatories like SOHO and STEREO, as well as ground telescopes braving the sun's glare. Then there's Lemon, cataloged as C 2025 A6. On November 8th, it swings to within just over half an AU of the sun, a comfortable distance for evening viewing. Unlike Swan's Dawn show, Lemon offers the classic dusk comet, hanging low in the western sky after sunset, glowing faintly at first, then brightening to perhaps magnitude 3.5 or even three. That puts it right on the edge of naked eye visibility in rural skies and an easy catch with binoculars in the suburbs. For casual observers, this might be the comet that gets shared most widely on social media, a bright evening beacon that anyone can photograph with a smartphone. But beyond the pretty tales and neighborhood sky parties, astronomers see something deeper seven significant comets in six months is an anomaly that defies standard statistical models. Even factoring in modern survey efficiency, the clustering is extreme. The chance of this happening randomly has been pegged at less than half a percent per decade, with some models suggesting one in a thousand odds. 
It's like rolling seven dice and seeing them all come up six. Possible, but so unlikely that you have to wonder if something else is going on. One hypothesis is that we are witnessing the aftermath of a collision far beyond the Kuiper Belt. A parent body, perhaps hundreds of kilometers wide, could have fragmented ages ago, sending its pieces on slightly different paths that now converge in the inner solar system. Another theory points to gravitational nudges from passing stars or galactic tides, which can jostle the Oort cloud and send clusters of comets sunward. Whatever the cause, this kind of lineup is rare enough that scientists are calling it a once-in-a-century opportunity to study comet physics under nearly identical conditions. And then there's the wild card, 3i slash ATLAS. Unlike the others, it didn't form in our solar system at all. Its hyperbolic trajectory, exotic chemistry, and suspiciously steady glow mark it as an interstellar visitor. While the rest of the caravan can be explained with Oort cloud statistics, 3i slash ATLAS is different. Its presence alongside six homegrown comets feels almost too neat. Some argue it's just timing. Others whisper about orchestration, about patterns in the data that suggest something more deliberate. In the words of one astronomer, it's like watching a parade where one float clearly doesn't belong. This is where the speculation ignites. Are we seeing a random cluster? Or are these objects part of a larger cycle we don't yet understand? Could Earth's orbit be drifting through a region of space where cometary debris is denser? Or, as some fringe theorists argue, is 3i slash ATLAS the herald of something? An engineered messenger traveling not alone, but as part of a coordinated wave? For now, the data are neutral. Orbital plots show safe distances. Light curves and spectra reveal chemistry, not intent. Yet the coincidences pile up, multiple comets arriving at once, one of them interstellar. Perihelia squeezed into a narrow band of weeks, a solar maximum adding drama with magnetic storms. Statistically improbable, visually spectacular, scientifically invaluable. The story of 2025's comet caravan isn't finished. Over the next months, telescopes will track jets, tails, and flares. Amateur astronomers will post photos of green comae and blue ion tails. And somewhere in the noise, perhaps, will be the signal. The clue that tells us whether this is simply a cosmic jackpot or the beginning of a chapter we never expected.